Do you remember when I talked to you for your 75th birthday, we were talking about Playboy. First of all, the video that you made for your husband, Carl Dean. You're probably wondering why I'm dressed like this. Well, it's for my husband's birthday. How did he react, Dolly? We know, <laughs> is he still recovering? Well, he did about to have a heart attack, but he got a big <laughs> kick out of it because I, I totally surprised him with that because he was in the, you know, in the kitchen den. And so I, uh, I got dressed and then I came through the door with this cake, rolled it in on that little tea card or whatever that was. And I, here I am in my uh, Playboy suit because I was actually, I used to joke that I was going to pose again for Playboy when I was Thir uh, when I was 75 and of course they didn't have the pictures anymore I don't know that I'd have done it anyway but uh, I thought well I'm going to do this and I'm going to surprise him so I kind of spent the morning with him cooking and moving around in my little uh, bunny suit and he loved it so that was fun that was for his birthday and for my birthday I still spent the day with him and we just kind of this was casual I don't go out so much anymore with COVID. I, I'm dying to go back out to restaurants. I used to love to get dressed up and do that. But I just got dressed up and stayed home with Carl. And That's the best. Somebody, yeah, they had, someone had sent me a birthday cake with my name on it. So I didn't have a, a Duncan Hines coconut or a banana pudding cake at that time. But, uh, but I will have many of them as time goes by. But that was just a, a sweet day with us just spending time together. Did you ever think of taking Carl's name? It's Carl Dean. Dolly Dean is kind of, it's no Dolly Parton, but was that ever an option? No, uh, because I had already uh, kind of, kind of sort of been established with my records. I had a couple of, before we got married, I'd had a couple of little records that kind of had, had charted a little bit. And so I thought, well, and I wanted to, you know, to have my dad's name always, you know, the Parton family, I wanted to represent, you know, our family. And so, uh, and I thought Dolly Dean, oh, I'd, I'd pass that along in my mind. I thought that sounded too made up, you know, Dolly Dean. That's like, it was like a fake show name, but my real name is, you know, Parton is my maiden name. So I just thought, well, you know, but I signed my name, Dolly Parton Dean so much, Sometimes I have to sign Dolly Dean on certain things, and sometimes I'll do it on the wrong on the wrong pages, like on the wrong contracts. I'll sign Dolly Dean when I should be signing Dolly Parton or or whatever. So it gets a little confusing, but I'm I'm stuck with Dolly Parton. But I, I love like being it. stuck with. I Carl use my fake name too, so there, there's something yeah. to that. But Dolly, the Playboy outfit. Did you hear the story about Keanu Reeves wearing? your original Playboy outfit. His mom was a costume designer and she made the one that you wore on the cover. And then later Keanu Reeves wore it um, with fishnet stockings and tennis shoes for a Halloween party. Ah, no, I didn't know that, but I love Keanu. His mom, you know, Patrick Eves, uh, Reeves Aaron at that time was doing a lot of my costumes and he was just a little old bitty thing and I go to fittings and I knew him since he was a little boy and we've kind of stayed kind of close because of that. But no, I didn't know that he had done done that, but I'm not surprised. His mom did some beautiful things for me and I love him. So uh, I'm not surprised that he'd do something fun like that. He has a great sense of humor. What do you remember about him as a little boy? I'm just trying to picture him on set with you. That's hysterical. Well, he was, I would, uh, she would bring him or I would go over to her house for the fitting, but he was beautiful. He was sweet. Oh, he was the most beautiful little boy you've ever looked at. You know, he's beautiful as a man, as you know, but he was so beautiful. I just remember those, you know, those beautiful shiny eyes, just being in awe of everything, all those sparkles and rhinestones and, and a girl looking at a girl half naked, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, but he was just sweet and, and nice and he still is. Oh, I love that story. That was one when I read, I'm like, oh, I cannot wait to ask Dolly about it. Um, tell me about what's in front of you. This seems like such a natural part partnership. First of all, the boxes are even so cute, Dolly. Yeah, the kids you're talking about. They, you know, we have the kids, but these, these are, yeah, these, oh, that's too. But yeah, I'm very proud of, to be involved and in working in partnership with Duncan Hines, because that's always been a great company, Lord. I've made tons of cakes and 
pies and things from from their recipes. So when we uh, talked about getting together in business, it just made perfect sense because I'm a Southern girl, big eater and cook, and all my sisters and all my family used to cook and bake. So we thought it was just a perfect fit. And so I'm very proud to be involved with them. And we've got so many wonderful things, all the great icings and all these mixes and uh, the coconut cake is especially good. And this is a the banana pudding cake. And I love banana pudding. <laughs> I love my bananas favorite. and anything. Mine the banana too. pudding, when I saw that, my because I'm from the South and my mom used to make it on the double boiler, homemade banana pudding and that flavor. Is this one delicious? Oh, it's great. You can only imagine. And it's it's really nice because, well, I love the pudding and I make a mean, you know, bowl of pudding, but to have, uh, you know, to have it in a cake too, and it's very moist and it's very good. And you got the little wafers and the bananas on top. So you can put as much of, you know, that stuff on as you want, do your own little touches. But this is a really good cake and coconut cake has always been a favorite of mine and millions of people. You are the whole package, Dolly. And I was just oh. reflecting back on your birthday. What's your philosophy on beauty? Well, I think true beauty comes from within, but the older you get, you know, you, you got to try a little harder, you know, yeah. to do things. But people often ask me, you know, what I do to, you know, stay young or look young. And I say, well, you know, I've got good lighting, good, good makeup and good doctors, which is all true. But you can have all of that, but if you don't like yourself and if you don't shine from the inside, if you don't let a personality go along with whatever beauty you may have, whether it's natural or painted on, you can make it real by being real. And so I think everybody should take pride in, everybody don't want to wear a bunch of makeup, but I think you should take pride in how you look because it not only makes life a little better for the people around you, it makes you feel better. So even on days that I don't feel like it, I put on a little bit of makeup and I fix my hair a little bit and it makes me feel better. And I, I want to not be a slouch around my husband either. So I think you should take pride in how you look. Have you always liked yourself, Dolly? Have you always had this disposition? I have. I've always been comfortable with who I am. And I really, uh, you know, it takes more than makeup, to, you know, to have beauty. And I don't, I, I'm not a natural beauty. I like to make positives out of negatives. So I try to, like everybody, I try to to compliment myself with whatever I, whatever I can, because, you know, I wasn't born like one of those raving beauties, but I'm always happy with who I am. Even when people try to say, oh, you should change, even back in my early days, oh, you don't need to be wearing all that makeup. You don't need to be wearing, you know, all that. You need to try to be a little classier. I thought, well, I'm me and I'm going to be me and I'm going to do what makes me feel good because if I feel good with me, you're going to feel good with me. So I really think there's truth in that. If you're not comfortable with yourself, nobody's going to be comfortable. They'll feel an uneasiness that they don't like. Whereas if you, you know, if you do like yourself and you embrace people and they feel the love, I think, and the honesty of it. Yeah. Got to like yourself first. Make yourself happy first. That's what my mom Make always Make yourself says. happy first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, last time you and I spoke too, we were talking about the nine to five reunion. Betty White just said that was her favorite song. What, first of all, did you know Betty White? Were y'all ever friends or connected? I met her. I met her time too. I just knew of her work and I just loved her. I just thought she was great. And I hope to be like that. I hope to be able to, if I live that long, I hope to be able to be a, uh, active and productive and i will you know be trying if i live that long i hope i don't live that long to be honest i just hope <laughs> i go out at, at my peak whenever that peak might be and then just fall out like that but don't we all want, wish for that i huh? see another good 40 for you as i said you haven't even hit your stride yet dolly the way the way i see you going anything with the nine to five reunion i want you ladies back together well uh we keep talking about that. We keep trying our best to try to find a vehicle. We've had several scripts written. We didn't like them. It was too much like the first one or, or this or that. But maybe it don't have to be uh, nine to five. In fact, I joined them on their last um, season of uh, Grace and Frankie. So or great. Frankie and Grace. Which, yeah, I always uh, box that too. I never know which. <laughs> I know. I never know which one comes first. But uh, anyway, I'm going to be on their last season 
uh, maybe their last show. And we got a chance to work together on that again. So that was special. But we're going to try to find something to do together. Uh, we better get after it, though. None of us are getting any younger. <laughs> <laughs> um, and back to Carl for a minute, 55 years. Um, I've been married 26. And I think there's no secret to marriage. It's a roller coaster. Talk about your roller coaster and how you've been <laughs> able to hold on. Well, we met uh, 57 years ago, fell in love when we met, or it was really a, a strong bond, and we're still together. And But we we have a similar sense of humor. We're both funny. Our sense of humor is different, but we're very entertaining, let's put it that way. And we're both able to find the humor in anything or make some humor for whatever it is. And so we're good friends. We respect each other. We like each other. And I'm I'm a Capricorn, he's Cancer, and those are supposed to be, if you follow that kind of I stuff. I like that stuff. Com compatible signs, anyway. But we, uh, and I stay gone a lot, so we're not in each other's face all the time. And uh, I think that that's probably helped a lot. But may, more than anything, we're just good friends, and we're, uh, we're likable people, and we like each other. Did you ever think there was a time that you wouldn't be 55 years in? Oh, no. I mean, I'd hoped we could live, I hope we, we live to be old t together and then uh, just go to sleep and never wake up together. But that's not likely to happen. But I, when I got married, I refused, I had to go across the state line because we were planning a big wedding uh, back in uh, when we got married in 66. But I was working with a record label that uh, was spending a lot of money on me, getting me prepped for success. And they asked me to not get married for a year. So we went that same weekend across the state line to Ringo, Georgia, and got married so it wouldn't be in the Tennessee papers. But anyway, uh, we just had, you know, that whole thing going with us. And then, of course, a year later to finish that story. Uh, and I was happy with him, always happy with him. And so a year later, the, uh, my, everything was going good. And, and the head of the label said, now, ain't you glad you didn't get married? I said, I got married the same weekend. You told me not to. <laughs> <laughs> so that goes to show you how you don't need to be telling people how to live their lives. Just let it be that. But no, we've never talked a divorce. We've never, um, I mean, I, I got married once. And even if something happened to him before me, I'd never marry anybody else. I just, that's going to be my only husband. I love that. And the yeah. song Jolene, Dolly, is it true that was about that redhead at the bank? Or there's some <laughs> backstory there? Tell me everything. Well, actually, it was based on uh, a little truth. Her name was not Jolene, but she was working at the bank, and she was this beautiful girl, and uh, that was bad enough that he was having to go to the bank as much as he was going, and I kept thinking, we ain't got that kind of money. So, uh, <laughs> not yet, anyway. But he was saying he's talking about a... a because he was in asphalt paving, he and his father. And he was saying, I said, why do you, why are you having to talk to her all the time? He said, well, I'm trying to get a loan. I'm trying to do this, you know, for our, our asphalt paving company. And I said, well, couldn't you talk to one of those hairy-legged boys about a thing like that? And uh, he said, no, this, I said, look, you better be talking to one of those boys or it's going to be your ass and your fault. So there's your ass fault. <laughs> but it was just, I was just jealous because she was prettier than me. And I think I just felt threatened. He didn't have a thing going with her, but he was flirting. But I'm a flirt too. But anyway, so I thought this makes a great idea for a song. So I wrote it. Change the and name to protect the guilty. 